Hello and welcome to another House of Wisdom Knife Review. We have a special treat for us today. This is a Clyde Chalinor Talon with dragon skin Damascus blade and a Thai Damascus handle. Isn't that beautiful? I own a lot of knives, but I picked this one up in a lottery on Blade 2018. And I have to say, this is probably now the most interesting, beautiful knife that I own. So we're going to talk about it a little bit. Historically, I have been horribly unlucky in lotteries, so much so that I won't even enter them. I just consider it a waste of my time. But as I was going by and I purchased a Hornet from Clyde, I'll show you the Hornet that I got with the Damasteel blade. It's a front flipper as opposed to the talon, which is a traditional flipper. Yeah, I already had a talon, so I went by to get a Hornet. And anyway, Clyde was encouraging me to enter the lottery because hardly anybody had entered it. And so I put in my name in one. There were two up for lottery. There was this one and then one with a, a damasteel blade and a damasteel insert. So I, I entered my name for both. And uh, I was over later in the day. Uh, doing knife reviews on the new Spyderco knives, and I got a beep, and sure enough, I had won the lottery of this knife, and so I ran over as quick as I could, and I paid him, and then uh, as soon as they got settled that I was going to be the winner and actually pay for the first knife, they drew the name for the second knife, and I won the second lottery too. I felt guilty about taking both of Clyde's lottery knives, so I I turned down the second one. This was the more interesting one, I thought. Although the, the Damasteel certainly was beautiful also, but I didn't want to be like a knife hog. I wanted someone else at the show to have the opportunity to win in a lottery also. And because I bought two of his uh, knives, I got this bling from Clyde. I got a Clyde, Clyde Chalinor Custom Knives t-shirt, which has... His emblem is his pivot, which is proprietary, so that's kind of cool. So apparently if you spend a couple thousand dollars with Clyde, he'll give you free t-shirts. Pretty good deal, I think. Well, anyway, I'm talking to you about Clyde a little bit. Clyde is a knife maker from Durban, South Africa. He's been making knives since 2014. He's part of a team. There's Francis Snell that helps with the design work, social media, and marketing, there's Luke Prinson, who helps with the CNC work, and there's Blessing, who helps assembling and doing finish work. All of the team members making these knives work only as part-time knife makers. All of the knife Clyde makes hold a lifetime warranty. Okay, so we'll talk about the blade on this. It is a dragon skin Damascus. It has a length of 3.25 inches, and the handle length with that beautiful Timascus inlay is 4.25 inches. And the total length of the knife is therefore 7.5 inches. The weight of the knife is 3.5, 3.9 ounces. I have some knives for comparison that are uh, of similar length. Here is the Scout, and here is the Shirogorov Neon. And then I also have the Microtech UTX-80, which is the same size, which is 7 1⁄2 inches. I'll also compare it to some other Chalonor knives. Here is the Hornet, which is a quarter inch smaller. And I have my first one, uh, Talon, which I picked up at Blade 2017. This I picked up at Blade 2018. You can order a custom from Clyde, and I'll be putting in the comments section his address so you can get a hold of him. I wanted you to be able to see two iterations. I wanted to compare them a little bit. Uh, the first one I got has a hand rub satin finish, just beautiful, and this has the dragon, dragon skin Damascus. This one has a Timascus inlay. This has a carbon fiber inlay. 
of note, since 17, Clyde changed the way he makes the back side or the clip side of the knife. He puts inlays on both sides, and so here's a Timascus inlay on the back. And as of 2017, he didn't make any inlays. And then the finishes are a little different. This has a bead blasted finish, and this is a stone wash finished. And I really don't know which one I like best. Of note, too, he can do something custom for you. He can press fit a ceramic ball into the head of his clip and he uses this as a bumper pad so that if anything knocks against it as it's in your pocket, he feels that it would be knocked off by this clip. Of course, the Rockwell hardness of a ceramic ball is 90. The titanium is a Rockwell hardness of them in the 40s somewhere. This one, he didn't place the ceramic ball on. But if you're getting a custom, you can request that, and that's something he'll do for you. On the dragon skin blade, sorry guys, he said that it takes so long to make this beautiful dragon skin Damascus that he's not going to be doing it anymore. He said that you can notice the different colors on here. You have some golds. Uh, some greens, some blues, some oranges, some reds, a little bit of purple there. All these different colors represent a different run of anodizing. He just anodizes it over and over and over again until he gets this beautiful palette of color. And anyway, he says it takes a whole day and a half and he's not going to do it anymore. <laughs> so I don't blame him. You know, it's uh, Michelangelo, when he painted the Sistine Chapel, it took him four years, and it, this is a work of art. I'm happy to have it, but it's something he says he just can't do all the time. It just wears him down. I have another colored blade, my EB Knives Bully, which the blade is made out of SM100, which contains titanium in it, and he does some coloring and anodizing of it, and it has this rainbow powder, and it's mostly yellow and orange and red on the scale, but it goes through a little rainbow configuration here at the bottom. But yeah, that's sort of interesting, but the Dragon Skin Damascus is just amazing. I'm just going to let you appreciate that a little bit. Well, how they make it, I, I've been told, I haven't talked to the actual makers of it, they say they get ball bearings and they forge weld them together and then they pour in molten steel on top of it uh, and then it makes a, an amalgam a bar and then they make knives out of it and whenever the ball bearings are regular in size but whenever the molten metal is poured on them they deform a little bit which is why these ball bearings aren't perfectly spherical but I think it makes it look even more cool and more like an actual dragon scale look at all those different colors it's a kaleidoscope of colors I just can't get over it. It's beautiful. Well, anyway, the blade has a thumb hole uh, like the eye of a raptor, and that's why it's called the talon. This has that distinctive hole, and it's very deployable by its thumb hole. On the spine, it has a sulcus for your thumb, and your thumb fits in there just like a glove. It has some mild jimping, so you get good traction with it. The other thing interesting about this blade is I call it, it is in a reverse tonto configuration. Whenever you say the word reverse tonto, it brings up the Benchmade 940, which I think is one of the first knives I remember having this reverse tonto instead of the, the clip part being from below, the clip part comes from above. So that's called a reverse tonto. And I think that's the style that he was looking for here, or the style that he achieved anyway. So that's the blade. Completely unique, completely amazing. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Okay, we'll move on to method of deployment. It has two methods of deployment. First of all, I'll talk about the flipper. You have some mild jimping here for traction. Uh, note that the flipper is well advanced to the pivot, and whenever you deploy it, you give it a deployment angle at about, I'm going to say, 60 to 70 degrees, which makes it a, a great flipper. It really flips out well. Also, the D10 is set so that you can deploy it with a thumb hole very nicely also. The handle uh, is made of titanium, and it has Tamascus inlays, and I'll let you appreciate those Tamascus inlays. And um, as I had mentioned before, he does them bilaterally. He feels it gives a little bit of balance. And actually what brought that change about was his customers uh, had noticed that 
it didn't seem to be balanced, the knife. I'll bring up the old one. You have one side that's got this beautiful carbon fiber, and then the other's eh, just kind of meh, normal titanium. And they thought it would be more balanced if uh, you had inlays on both sides. So he started doing it, and that's the way he does it now, at least for the past year. So I really like the change that he made in that. Okay, we'll talk about the pivot. The pivot is also his his uh, proprietary logo. It's proprietary. You can undo this with a screwdriver, and here's what I do, what I recommend that you do. Put some saran wrap or some plastic wrap around your flathead screwdriver, and then you can get it in that pivot, and then you can undo it. One way tightens, the other way loosens it. Another way that's easy is you can use a just a metal coin. I have a penny here. The idea is that copper is softer than steel and that you're not going to scratch it up. And that's the idea with the plastic coating and the saran wrap around a flathead screwdriver is you can use this. This would be hardened steel, of course, but it's not going to scratch up your pivot if you cover it uh, uh, and put a protective coating of plastic or rubber between the uh, pivot and the screwdriver head. Okay, uh, moving on along. Anyway, the pivot is on ceramic bearings, and the detent ball is ceramic also. There are other people who made proprietary pivots that can be done with a coin or a flathead screwdriver. I come to mind of Shira Goroff. It has a, a flat uh, pivot also, but the edge extends to the periphery on one side and it doesn't on the other so it looks cool it just doesn't look like a screw for a flathead screwdriver uh, there's another maker called Chebrikov he makes the toucan which I almost buy it this year at Blade 2018 and I, I was said let me think about it and then when I went back to buy it at the end of the day one of the knife buyers I think it was Fort Henry Custom Knives came by and bought it out from under me. So uh, that's still on my grail list of knives to get. So anyway, I think it's a great idea whenever my knife makers do that. They make pivots that can be done undone with coins or flathead screwdrivers. And uh, that's a neat design characteristic of this knife. The lock on the knife is a frame lock. And here you can see its lock up is pretty early. It's maybe uh, 15%. There is a steel lock bar insert, and you can tell a little bit of difference in the color change here. That whole side there is a lock bar insert, and I run my fingernail over that, and it is so good on the fit and finish that you can't even tell it with your fingernail. It is just perfectly mated with the titanium of the lock bar. So anyway, it has a lock bar insert. It has an over-travel stop also there. The pocket clip is made, uh, it's a 3D clip made of titanium, and it's fitted artistically to fit the knife. As you can see, the lower aspect of the pocket clip has this curve that matches perfectly the curve of the lower aspect of the handle. Again, I want to bring up, if you have a custom-made knife and you want the press-fit ceramic detent ball in there or the ceramic ball in there you can certainly do that and he'll he'll hook you up with that on this particular knife he didn't but even without the ceramic ball I think it just really artistically fits the knife some of the knife especially in the productions knife it seems like they just get a clip off the shelf it's straight it doesn't fit artistically well with the the knife at all but this is one where he took effort to think that through and make it look like it belongs to the knife it's a part of the knife the ergonomics on the knife are fantastic. It has a place for your forefinger. There's a little more pronounced cutout here so you can access the lock bar. And then your fingers fit well. And a 4.25 inch handle is just perfect for my hand. It is a great knife ergonomically. The action of the knife is fine. It flips out nicely. It's a shake shut knife, just so you know. It's not a fall shelf like a Grimsmo or a Thorburn, but uh, I think it's intentionally designed that way. Talk about the signage. There is no signage on this knife. It's completely sterile. The show side is sterile. The clip side is sterile. There's no indication of the maker or the blade steel or any of the materials or the lot number or anything like that. It's just a completely sterile knife and a beautiful knife at that. So what are my opinions of the Chalinor Talon with the dragon skin blade and the Timascus insets? I really like it. One of the downsides for me is I think 
uh, this dragon skin is so pretty and so beautiful and took Clyde Chaloner's team so much time to anodize it. I don't think I'd want to cut with it. I'm afraid I'd, I'd mess it up. So it's more considered an art knife rather than a user for me. The other downside is you notice the dragon skin, its color palette is mostly in, it's got some greens and some reds and oranges, and the color palette of the Timascus is a bit different. It's mostly blues and purples, and so some people may look at this and say that clashes a bit. It's a little bit like wearing plaid pants with a polka dot shirt. I don't mind it. I think it's beautiful. I think they're both premium materials, and I like the way that it is. What do I like about it? Well, I like the artistic theme. I like it that it's called a talon, and it has this bird beak look and an eye of a raptor. It really looks like a raptor, doesn't it? And then uh, he took effort to integrate the clip to make a designed clip, not just something straight. That would have been easy, but he 3D machined it to, to fit artistically with the curvature of the bottom of the handle. And I like how he put the inlays on both sides, both the show side and the clip side, to, to balance the knife off. Off better. It's great artistically, has a great artistic theme throughout the knife. The fit and finish on this knife are world class, and one of the examples I gave are how perfectly mated the lock bar is, but everything on this knife is perfect. Um, and the hardware, I really like the hardware. It's proprietary, yet it's simple enough that you can use a flat headed screwdriver or a coin to undo it. I like it. Some of the makers are making hardware that you need to buy a second proprietary pivot tool just to undo it, and that's really uh, not as great as this. Okay, we'll talk about the blade. This knife really, to me, is all about the blade. This dragon scale Damascus is so amazing with all the different colors. It's art. It's Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel. And this represents a day and a half of Chal Clyde Chaloner's life. And so I'm just so thankful that at least for some knives before he quit doing it, uh, he did this because it is unique, it's different, and it is completely beautiful. Well, the inlays. Wow, the Timascus inlay is really well done and looks great also. It was colored in such a way that really brought out the variations in the Timascus. And I love the construction. It's simple. It has one pivot and one standoff, and that's it. That's all for disassembly. I like the simplicity, too, in that it's not all billboarded up. It has no markings whatsoever. It's completely sterile. I love the knife. So in summary, if you're looking for a knife that's an edc size knife with excellent fit and finish, with the materials that can be put into it to make it into the art knife category, I think the Clyde Chaloner Talon may be the knife for you. Thanks for watching. This is today's review. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in getting a Talon or a Hornet, I'm going to put Clyde's contact information in the box below. So we'll see you on the next review.